Welcome. Welcome back to the School of Obedience. Always good to be found in the Word of God. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Before we get into the video, please consider subscribing. Leave a like on the video. It helps. And also, Patreon link in the description. Consider participating with us as we try and spread the gospel to as many people as possible. God bless you. Let's get into today's teaching. Now, in the book of First Samuel chapter 15, Saul is given an instruction to carry out God's will and God's purpose to destroy the Amalekites and so on and so forth. So he has about 100,000 foot soldiers and he's sent out and the instruction is for him to destroy everything. Okay, this is war, so he's told kill everyone, kill the women, the children, all the cattle, all the sheep, destroy everything, leave nothing. He then goes out, all right, and then changes the instruction that God had given him. He then keeps the best of the sheep and the cattle and so on and so forth. He preserves them because he says he wants to make a sacrifice to God, but he preserves them because he's listening to the people. Okay, because we all know that Saul, being king, he's the people's man. He's the king that the people wanted. All right, so he does that, and Samuel comes to him because Saul did not carry out the instructions as God gave gave him. All right, I hope you follow. And then in the morning, Samuel gets up. I'm just reading from the scriptures here. In the morning, Samuel gets up. And when he looks for Saul, he told, he's told that Saul's gone to Carmel. So Samuel goes there to meet him. And when Samuel reaches there, Saul says, the Lord bless you, I've carried out the instructions. But Samuel asked, so if you've carried out all the instructions, what's the bleating of the sheep in my ears? What's the lowing of the cattle that I hear? And then Saul answers that the soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. They spared the best sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the Lord, but we totally destroyed the rest. Now, that was not what God said. This is important for you to take note of. Okay, this is important for you to understand. That is not what God told him to do. It seems like a noble gesture, but it is not what God said he must do. So Samuel's angry and he says, you know, let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. And this is in verse 16. And Saul's like, you know, tell me. Samuel said, Although you were once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribe of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel, and he sent you on a mission, saying, go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amalekites. Wage war against them until you have wiped them out. Why did you not obey the Lord? Okay. Totally destroy them. So Samuel says, why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you pounce on the plunder and do evil in the eyes of the Lord? Now, when you look at what Saul did, all right, we would not consider it as something evil because he was bringing an offering to God. He was wanting to sacrifice the best to the Lord. He he says he wanted to honor God with sacrifice. So we'd look at that and think, no, but that's okay. But that is not what God wants. So he argues and he says, no, but I did obey the Lord. I went on the mission, the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agag, their king. The soldiers took sheep and cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God, in order to sacrifice them to the Lord your God at Gilgal. Now, this is the part. This is the important part. This is what you need to take in. 
Samuel answers Saul and he says, Does the Lord delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice and to heed is better than the fat of rams because rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Okay, so because Saul did not obey God, God rejected him as king. Saul was given an instruction, and this is the first thing that I want you to understand. We obey God as God says we should. We obey the word as it is written. We do not alter the word. We do not tweak it. We do not modify it because we think we're making a better deal for God. God knows what he wants and God is God all by himself. We are not counselors and advisors to God. So what is written in the word, we do. It's that simple, okay? What is written in the Bible is what we do, is what we practice, is what we put into practice in our lives. That is true obedience. Now, for many of us, that is not what we apply. In fact, a lot of the time we find ourselves in a place where we want to negotiate with Scripture and then we say things like, God understands. God knows my heart. God knows what I intended to do. But that's not what happened with Saul because that's the same thing that's going down there. We want to sacrifice the best to God. God knows my intentions. I obeyed him, but I want to sacrifice to God. That's my intention. But that is not what God wants. So this is a principle that I want you to grasp. This is a principle that I want you to get a hold of. Keep it in your mind. Keep it in your heart. We obey the word of God as it is written. All right. That is very, very important. Let me say that again. We obey the word of God as it is written. Okay, now I want you to say it with me. We obey the word of God as it is written. That's how we obey the word of God. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because the last time um, on this channel, we talked about what about Jesus and how we all focused on ourselves and so on and so forth. And now the thing is, I want to live for Jesus, but how do I? It's a question that should be common in the heart of every believer. How do I live for Jesus? How do I become like him? How do I become a follower of Jesus, a true disciple of Jesus? And it comes down to one thing, and that is obeying his word. That's what it comes down to. A lot of us lack in our relationship with Christ because we've made the tradition, can I use the word tradition, of, of Christianity or discipleship, we've made it about many other things except the life of obedience. That's what we've done. We've put everything else in the forefront, but obedience should be at the forefront of everything. Because obedience is how we do the will of God. Obedience is how we have a relationship with God. Obedience is what connects us to God's will, therefore connecting us to God. Obedience is everything. Now, I know that People will ask, but what about worship? What about prayer? What about giving? What about fasting? All those things fall under the banner of obedience. The Bible says pray. So if you are obedient, you will pray. The Bible says fast. So if you are obedient, you will fast. The Bible says give. If you are obedient, you will give. You get the drift. Okay, so... Even when God called out the children of Israel and he called them to be his people, 
It was given to them, and if you read in Deuteronomy 28, it was given to them that they would be God's people, but the condition was that they must obey God. That was the sole condition, that they must obey God. And commands and statutes were given to them, and they had to follow those things. How did they have to follow them? As it was written, as God said it, without tweaking it, without improving it, as it is written. That's what they had to do. Okay, And in obeying God that way, God provided for them. God sheltered them. God protected them. But most of all, he became their God. He had a relationship with them. They could worship him and he would lead them, watch them, keep them and be their God. And every nation knew that the children of Israel, God, the God of heaven was their God. And all through scripture, those that gave their lives to God and lived in obedience to God. So, We have to understand that it's about obedience. We look at Adam's relationship with with God in the Garden of Eden. He was given a command to live by. Do not eat of the tree that's in the midst of the garden, which he then broke, and the relationship with God was severed. Okay, and to come back to that relationship, it had to be in obedience. When you look at Christ's relationship with God, the Bible says he was obedient even unto the death of the cross. And he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Christ then becomes the perfect man because of his obedience to the will of the Father. He says, I'm about my Father's business. He says, my meat is to do the work of him that sent me. So Christ, can I say, thrived on being obedient to the Father, being our greatest example for the life of obedience. So, yes, I want a relationship with Christ. Yes, you want a relationship with Christ and you want to walk with Christ, know Him, be filled with the Spirit. You want to experience what it is to truly be a believer and a disciple of Jesus Christ. If That is what you want, to overcome the world, to overcome temptation, which are all done through Christ, to receive true salvation, which is done through Christ. Okay, and we'll talk about sanctification for a moment, but those things are done through Christ. It has to be on His terms and not yours. The mistake we make as modern day believers is that we try and live and walk our Christian faith on our terms. But again, how do we obey God? How do we obey the Bible? As it is written. Okay, that is very, very important. Not on your terms. God did not set his word. God did not send his son to die on the cross to come to the table for negotiations, to see how we can best come to an agreement of how you can serve him. That is not the way it works. You want to overcome temptation, you want to overcome the world. You can never do it on your own terms or in your own strength. We do it through Christ. How? In obedience. Let me read you a few scriptures just so that we can understand. Okay, but before I do that, we are also sanctified through the word. Okay, made holy, made separate to belong to God through the word of God. How? How does the word sanctify us? When we read it, it changes our minds, it changes our hearts. When we practice it, it separates us from the world. That's how we are sanctified, okay? It separates us from the world. It makes us different. So we are sanctified by practicing the word of God. We are made holy. We are made to belong to God by practicing the word of God. Okay, now, let me read you a few verses here. John chapter 14 and verse 23. Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. You see that? If you love me, you obey my teaching. 
Obedience is essential, and I've talked about this on this channel before. But I want to revisit it because I want you to understand obedience from the point of being a true disciple of Jesus Christ. So if you love me, you obey my teaching. That's what Jesus said. I want you to take note of this point because one of the things that I'm trying to fix in my own life is that I feel that I did not take the Bible seriously enough. We read scripture, but we casual about the application of the scripture. We relaxed about the Bible. So now here Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey my teaching. So that means if I do not love him, I do not obey his teaching. So if I say to him, I love you, then I must walk in obedience to what he taught. You understand? Because it's got to be opposite. I can't say that, no, I love you, but... Your teachings, I don't really follow them, you know. I'll alter this. Then that's not loving Jesus. Okay, now, when, when we were talking about the children of Israel earlier on, I mentioned I mentioned Deuteronomy 28, and it says in Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1, it says, If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. Now, please note there, okay, I'm reading this from the NIV. He says, If you fully obey, again, I'm going to repeat this until it's captured in our hearts. How do you fully obey God as it is written? As it is written. In, in the book of James chapter 1 and verse 22, the Bible says, don't be just hearers of the word. Do not be merely, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Listen, I'm of the opinion that the modern day Christian loves the word. We love the word. Preaching, now when I say we love the word, don't get excited and think, oh yeah, we love the word. Because preaching has become entertainment. And that's what we love, the entertainment of preaching. The antics and the, the well-presented stage and the themes on stage, and that's what we love. We love the antics of it, the excitement, and especially those preachers that can rile up your emotion. That's what we love. But we do not love the application of the word. When you read the Bible, when you meditate on Scripture, practice it. Because if you are just hearing the Bible, if you are just reading the Bible, you are deceiving yourself. Okay? There is no benefit to reading the Bible without applying the Bible to your life. Because if you are not applying the Word to your life, it just becomes another book. And yes, a better book than most books that are out there. In fact, I think the greatest book ever written, but it's just a book. But now you experience the power of the Bible when you obey it, when you practice it, when you do what the Bible says. I'm sorry to say, but there's just too many of us believers living life the way we want to live, making decisions. I'm not praying today because I'm tired. I'm not giving now because I, I feel there's things that I need to do. I'm not going to fast because so-and-so's birthday is coming up on the weekend and I need to enjoy at their birthday party. I'm not going to worship God because I'm taking a sabbatical. We make all these funny rules and conditions that we put on our lives and it's not what God wants. It's not the way you have a relationship with God. When I look at my own life, when I look at my own life, all the struggles, all the difficulties, all the, 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 the pain, the hardship, the sicknesses, and the, you know, just being, what can I say? 
not being where I should be and doing what I should be doing, I can blame anyone. But it comes down to one thing, not living in obedience to the word of God. That's it. I mean, God has availed himself to us. I don't know how much more God can avail himself to us. I mean, he gave his son. Jesus died on the cross. A brutal death, not for some other reason. No, he died for our sins. He died for us. He died to reconcile us to the Father. So I don't know what more God can do in order to bring us back to him or bring us to a place of obedience. The life of obedience has to be on us. It has to be on me. It has to be on me. I have to obey how? As it is written. In, in, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58, the Bible says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that, you lab- that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. What is the work of the Lord? What am I giving myself to? I'm giving myself to the life of obedience, doing what God wants me to do, doing what the Bible says I must do, and making sure that I habitually practice the Word of God. Habitually practice the Word of God. It is so important. So important. Obedience is essential. Obedience is what makes you belong to God. That's what makes you belong to God. Because in obedience, you show God that you've surrendered your will to His. And now you want to live a life that pleases Him. Thy will be done. It's not something we should just say with our mouths. And that's another thing that we need to get far away from as believers. Saying things to God. Oh Lord, I love you. Lord, thy will be done. Lord... Practice it. Do it. Do it. Take the Bible seriously and practice the Word of God. Listen to this. This is 1 John chapter 3, verse 21 and 22. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from Him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. You see, so your heart must not condemn you first. When you read the Bible, it must not, your heart must not say, but you're not doing this. You're not living this way. That's the first thing. If your heart does not condemn you, then you'll ask anything from God. Now, when we, anything there, we cannot just use it loosely. Anything as a believer, anything as a disciple of Jesus, anything as a child of God, okay? Because the word anything there can be, so for example, I can say if it's anything, and like many preachers make it anything you want, I can say, God, please kill all the people that don't like me. No, it's got to be according to the will of God. Why? Because I'm living in a life of, of obedience. Okay, I am living in a life of obedience. So that obedience determines what I ask for. All right, so if we keep his commands and do what pleases him, we can ask him for anything. Okay, let me read one more verse. First Kings chapter 2 and verse 3. Observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in obedience to him and keep his decrees and commands, his laws and regulations as written in the law of Moses. And that's what I want you to pick out, as written in the law of Moses. Not as you understand them, not as you wish them to be, not as they are interpreted to you by somebody else, as written in the law of Moses. Do this so that you may prosper in all you do and wherever you go. 
as written. So if that's the instruction, what about for us believers? Are we obeying the words of Christ as they are written? In fact, not just the words of Christ, the entire Bible. Are we obeying the instructions of the Bible as they are written? I know I, I said one more verse, but I just have to read Acts 5.32 here. We are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey Him. Okay, so the Holy Spirit is a witness. But please note, the Holy Spirit is given to those that obey God. If you are not in obedience, you are not filled with the Holy Spirit. I did a series of teachings on the Holy Spirit. I'll link it in the description. I'll put it in the card up here. Go and check that out. But I want to emphasize, you will not be filled with the Holy Spirit if you are not in obedience. They say that the sign that you are filled with the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. Anybody can speak in tongues. Anybody. But not anybody can be in obedience to God. The sign that you are filled with the Holy Spirit is your life of obedience because the Holy Spirit comes and witness to Christ, witness to the words of Jesus Christ. Obedience is essential. Obedience is essential. And it's time that we, we make that stand, that I, I want to experience God, especially in these days that we are living in. And I'm not talking about the virus that's going on. No, I'm talking about the evil days that we're living in. Obedience is essential. So that's my challenge to you, is put your, put your ego aside Put your selfishness, your pride, put all those things aside and come to God and surrender to His Word and choose to live a life of obedience so that we can now experience God and walk with Jesus Christ. Because that's how you walk with Jesus. That's how you show you love Him. That's how you show that you want to be His disciple, by obeying Him. It's not by saying sweet words to Jesus. It's not by saying wonderful things to him. It's by being in obedience to him. And if you obey his words, you are walking with him. If you obey his words, you are putting Christ at the forefront, at the center of your life. And yes, on this channel, we are going to start teaching the words of Jesus Christ. I want to go through a few of his parables, just randomly teach the words of Jesus so that you can understand and practice the words of Jesus Christ. Very important. Okay, so that's the challenge today. That's the message. That's the teaching for today. Please consider applying this to your life. Don't just be a hearer. Do it. Let's live after Christ by being obedient to the words of Jesus. Subscribe to the channel, watch this space. The teachings on the words of Christ will come and we'll practice them, we'll understand them together and we'll obey them and we'll live them to the best of our ability and give ourselves to God and take pride and pleasure in walking in obedience to God. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Um, please remember, True disciples of Jesus Christ, we learn, we practice, and we teach, because that's the only way to do it. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next one. Amen.